Hello all. Uh, myself is Dr. Shashidara Hachar. So I am working as an associate professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at National Institute of Engineering, Mysore. So I have an 20 plus years of industry and an, uh, teaching experience. So I worked in the field of digital verification. majorly on design verification on UEM techniques. So, my thesis is uh, with respect to the methodology which is done with an, a, a design verification for uh, different uh, physical traits uh, in a biometric uh, applications. So, on these sessions I am going on covering on randomization and an a functional coverage. So, which is the major two important factors which is required for your design verification at a different ends uh, of uh, VLSA design or an a digital uh, VLSA design which carries uh, different aspects uh, to take up to generate and test vectors, how to randomize, how, how to get a test vectors for a different applications and how it can be considered uh, for your verification stages, different verification stages either at an a pre synthesis or at an a post synthesis or at an a for functional verification or at an a formal verification or going through an a, a um, post routing and a pre routing verification at every stage of the verification this uh, technique is required uh, once you are considering with an a ATPG parameters. So, here I am discussing a generalized manner I am not taking up any applications to derive it. So, uh, generally uh, we take up an application to do this type of verification. So, the things is how, how well is so your module so which is covered with these uh, verification parameters. So, so let us segregate I think in the previous uh, sessions already you covered with an the basics of an a system Verilog, uh, how it is the Verilog is uh, the system Verilog is different from the Verilog and how the it will be called as an a a hardware verification language as compared to an a design language and how the verification language will be goes on happening with the different aspects may be at an interfaces. So, may be at an uh, the assertions. So, may be at an uh, the considering the whole databases uh, to be considered. So, the major factors in the system verilogs to take up this randomization as well as the functional verification is through your OOPS concepts object oriented programming uh, language concepts. So, majorly we are considering here in the OOPS concepts and inheritance and a polymorphism the major factors how both will be covered uh, taken up to cover. So, your test vector generation as well as the test vector design also for the uh, given uh, design models. So, with these aspects of uh, uh, the OOPS concepts we are more effective in an a UVM or in an a OVM techniques to consider uh, this uh, uh, randomization and an a, a functional coverage for an a, a systems. So, what I am looking at in this presentation is to make to define a randomization which provides an a major uh, aspects of your design verification majorly on test vector generations. So, which is goes with to provide uh, uh, the whole uh, appearance of your uh, ATPGs. Uh, so, as compared to the uh, a manual test vector insertions. So, 
the test vectors may be the ATPG may not be present at an a single end. So, may be present at an a different ends in a different verification techniques. So, and also it will be considered for your uh, 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 synthesis optimization te techniques also somewhere else. So, and which will be makes us this randomization to be appeared. So, majorly this randomizations will be considered while taking up the randomizations will be considered. So, your probabilistic and statistical appearances all these probabilistic and statistical appearances will be considered uh, through a dynamicity at an a timing analysis and a non dynamicity or a statistic appearances at an a, 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 a non timing analysis may be at your power analysis. So, may be at your uh, functional analysis etcetera etcetera etcetera, but so once you goes to an a, a timing analysis may be at an STA. So, may be at an a post routing uh, analysis uh, overcoming your setup volution and a hold volution. So, at that time, so we are taking up all the randomizations with respect to any dynamic appearances. So, to cover this dynamicity as well as the statistic appearances. So, we list out major features uh, of the uh, randomizations that major features will be covering. Uh, to covering to explain how your aspects of uh, the ATPG or test vectors will be generated and how it will be covered in a different aspects of an a system very lux. So, may be using uh, the OOPS features. So, may be using the uh, data types or two vector or an a four vector data types of an a uh, system very lux as well as uh, considering all test bench generation techniques uh, at that point and listing out the major features of an uh, randomization. So, after looking at the features we will put these things to an applications. So, where the randomization will be looks for an major significance uh, of its appearances also. So, that may be considered with uh, one part of the design verification and the uh, other part of the design also. So, the, the aspects will be goes on varies with respect to that. So, what is the outcome of uh, the whole thing of randomization to thing? So, majorly we are looking at the how effectively your test vectors are generated, how effectively you will make uh, you to understand the significance of randomizations. So, in an a system very log or in the part of an ATPGs, so or in, in making us uh, the whole verification process to be a simplified manner or more effective creation of an uh, uh, the performance of an a verification so, etcetera etcetera etcetera. So, these are the web resources or the resources what I used uh, to prepare this materials. So, the web resources are so the system log.org. So, majorly I am going with Axelera manual uh, to take up these randomizations uh, as well as the functional verification. So, many queries which is taken up uh, from an uh, ASIC world parameter where we are defining uh, different aspects applications aspects of an a, a randomization in an a system very log. So, I am just given an a starting page of an uh, system very log so you can go up to an uh, the final uh, indexed values uh, in that to look at on um, the whole randomization parameter. So, and also you can refer some of the verification technique uh, parameters. So, I am looking at here system very log. Uh, verification parameter that is suug dot org that is an whole website which will be looked at on that. So, you can use uh, the uvm dot org also because that will be gives more aspects on uh, the randomization principles or a system very log uh, features with respect to an uh, uh, uvm. So, the, the majorly the books are so crispier which will be defined as your syllabus also describes with an crispiers. So, I am also referring the crispiers. This is a Bible of an system very log also which can be defined. So,
So UVM I am referred with an a manual by Janik Bergon. So that is a UVM manual. So a verification methodology manual, full verification methodology manual should be uh, put it on to you to refer the whole system very large uh, concepts. So as the randomization looks for any test benches, the functional coverage also looks for any test benches. So I also referred that Bergon, Bergon uh, book, another book from the manual to writing and the test benches. So these are some of the materials which will be looks for us to define uh, the randomization and the principles. So we have n number of materials uh, on uh, this uh, system very log or in an uh, UVM or an OVM techniques. So you just refer the things what it is required for an uh, randomization parameters. So it is an application wise, so the randomization will be an, a very good uh, principle uh, to apply for the test bench generations. So, but uh, it an a set of the principles applications. So you look at on what applications it is and how the ATPG is required. So with respect to that, it may goes on various your uh, parameters. So before taking up the system variable, let us look at on the brief overview on how uh, your uh, ATPG will be looks for your systems also. So. I am just uh, taking up to consider uh, a, a designed module, which is my module, uh, design module. I covered this design module with an a, a, a test bench, which is my TB. I insert all the vectors from this TB to this module and I will verify and I will get out with an a outputs. So you can look at on these whole parameters. So your thing will be looks at on how well you will, you will introduce the, uh, the whole, whole uh, inputs to the module. The whole inputs to the module itself we are defining it as an a test vectors or as an a test cases which is covers the set of test vectors which needs to be considered. So once it is put down to a module it will be processed the request from an initial parameters to an a final parameter which is defined with an a functionality or which is defined with an a formal values constraint values which needs to be considered. So get outs with an a some output values from that designed module, so that itself we are calling it as an a responses. The whole the test vectors which is inserted will be dependent on to generate these responses. These responses are input to your test benches to consider to generate the next stage of test vectors which needs to be verified so such that I have a good feedback analysis so such that what all the errors which is obtained at an a responses with respect to the previous test vectors will be compared and finalized with the next test vector to be inserted. So if it is an a over deviated from the required value so then the whole things will be looked on to correct this test vector to be inserted to the next cycle of the module verification or next cycle of test vector or ATPG insertions. So this process will be continuously going on happen until unless you get out with an, a very good verified model uh, or high verified model of your design system or designed models. So this whole process, so what all I am doing, so at every stages, so I am calling it as an a design verification. So it may be only with respect to an a functionality, so then I will call it as an a functional verification. So if it is with respect to an a pre or a post synthesis verification, maybe for an a constraints which is inserted, so maybe for an a power uh, values which is taken up or maybe for an uh, the whole um, uh, the system 
generation which is considered etc 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 with respect to that so this whole things is goes on uh, uh, varies uh, the test vectors itself will be goes on varies so with respect to that so and again if you take a, a, a formal verification the whole system uh, will be looks only with the whole design system only will be looks with respect to the formal constraints which is given so with respect to that the whole test vector generation is also goes on very very the whole verification process itself will be goes on very with respect to uh, that so our major aspect is to think on so uh, if i have an a set of vectors let us say so my inputs are uh, uh, let us think so i am just verifying a two two input and get so i have an a, a two input values so that so i need to generate an a 2 to the power of uh, 2 to the power of two number of test vectors that is a four set of test vectors so is it my module required to verify for all these aspects all these four vectors are not so that is the important question so if i have only an four vectors i can insert it so if i have an a n number of input so then my whole module will takes up 2 to the power of n number of input vectors or a test vector so then so what is the condition of verification at that time what is the time requirement what is the resource requirement so what is the availability of the, the total number of test vector requirement so that's why so we are choosing in these 2 to the power of n test vector a, a a a set of test vector which is goes on verify the whole module and gives out very good verification status or very good verification um, uh, efficiency so that's why we will make an strategy to do this so through generating a randomized values for my module so that will gives out an a very good or a higher efficiency in the verification process so that's why we look this 2 to the power of n test vector needs to be selected or needs to be generated in this randomized fashion or randomized values so only those randomized values will be inserted to this design module and they get verified through this response value through, through this response value so every randomized value which is generated will be get verified by the previous responses we obtained or previous errors we obtained so such that the next stage of verification will be a, a highly efficient value so that's what uh, our thinking so such that so our major requirement is to generate a randomized test vector test vector is with respect to correct the previous errors which is there which is presented in the verification previous verification process and taken up uh, to correct that in the next uh, uh, verification process so that is the major requirement so that's why so we will think on to create an a, a generalized uh, random test sets so which creates an a, a test cases so the whole test cases what all i'm going on creating so needs to be generated in a different fa fashion so we have a two types of random test vector generation one is an a constrained random test and another one is an a non constrained random test so the major principle which is assumed in an a system very log to take up the constrained random test than going with an a non constrained random test so why we looks for an a constrained random test as the non constrained random test. first we look at on what is constrained random test and an a, a non constrained random test so in a constrained random test we have a set of limitations 
set of uh, uh, limitations for the verification which is taken up from your specification so to the design values so that will be considered at this verification so that the whole thing is verified for the given constrained values or given limitation values similarly so in a non constrained random test so we don't have any boundary for us to work out so on these aspects we generally generate a set of test vectors i insert the test vectors to your design and get verified it. so in a non constrained random test we as we have an a, a free hands to insert it a free hands to create your test environment a free hand to get verified effectively in your design so that's why so our solution providing for this so are creating a test cases is an easiest way but once you goes for an a constrained random constrained test cases or a test vectors so you are so you are total appearance or the total design verification module will be goes um, uh, uh, for an a, a, a limited versions or limited uh, parameters to be considered so that's why so we need to have uh, we need to have a very good uh, solution to be provided uh, to do this constrained random values so our major interest is to create these solutions uh, to generate these uh, set of test vectors automatically uh, for uh, these type of constrained test cases or test vectors so that's why so we are providing an a solution that solution we call it as an constrained random test or as an a crt which is generated automatically and a test cases so through the probabilistic solutions so that probabilistic solutions is considered with respect to the previous verification errors which is obtained for us so there is the major factors to look at on how your uh, 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 values needs to be considered over that so which makes us to find more and more bugs so keep it in a mind so if your design is not producing any bugs so then that will be the failure of a design so if your design provides us a sufficient bugs so then we are saying it as an a, a that design as an a very good design so because so every design may not be um, a, a, a limited parameter uh, may not be a considerable limited parameter so it will be an a, a whole set which needs to be things on the errors where and all all the possible errors so where and all it will be a fine set of uh, where and all it will be find it out so that's why so we majorly looks up uh, in a verification process these errors these bugs so which is either through your directed process or through an uh, indirected uh, process so here in this case in a crt manner crt environment so we are going to find an a, 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 a directed test errors so which we think may be there so or which we target to be presented so through these crts so the crt may not be things on how many bugs it goes on finding it so what all the bugs it goes on taking up but so it will be things on it will be thinking on so there will be an a bug which can be generated so that bug is determined by through your input test vectors that input test vectors itself will be called as an stimulus so that stimulus is as you are using an crt constrained random uh, test vectors so uh, so such so that i will call this stimulus as an uh, random stimulus parameter so 
to find this box we need to create an a very good environment uh, which finds more box uh, which takes more work than creating one uh, what we need to look at on at an crt so that is why so the whole environment test vector or a verification environment what we are creating so itself will be called as an a, 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 a CRT environment. So, this CRT environment is a major uh, parameter which will be looks at on um, how your constraints will be considered, uh, how your constraints is get verified, how your constraints will be taken care, how your constraints will be put on to generate the stimulus values. So, that is uh, through your uh, directed test value. So, that is why, so the whole creation of the environment is an important factor in an, a, a random test principles. A CRT environment is needs not only to create the stimulus, but also to predict the results as, as I defined it, so using a reference model, transfer function and other techniques. So, what is the input to this CRT environment? The CRT environment will be goes to creating with your two modular architecture at the test bench side. So, one is your expected model that is called as an a reference model, the another one is called as an a generated model. So, the reference model you create through your virtual appearances or you create through your uh, 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 your known uh, values. So, uh, the another one which is goes on uh, generated from this verification process, so which will be called as an expecting models or uh, sorry expected models. So, as we are analyzing this whole reference model through your results or through your responses. So, as I defined it also in the previous slide, how your verification uh, will be considered a decent. So, so that there should be an a feedback. That feedback is should be an a positive feedback, uh, sorry, negative feedback. So, so that you will get the more stability in the appearances. So, that more stability will be looks for through defining your transfer functions. How your transfer function will be looks at on, how your transfer function will be taken care will be defined for this. Other than this, we have so many principles to apply uh, to create this CRT environment, where and how and why you are doing your verification will be the important factor to define the techniques. So, let us say if I am doing just an uh, one STA a static timing analysis verification model. So, at that time I will look only on a dynamic uh, sorry static timing values uh, to be analyzed. So, so, that my major my major techniques which will be applied is only with respect to the stimulus uh, uh, applications uh, sorry the stim stimulus which is applied to the design models. So, so that may be goes with the different values which needs to be considered, so which needs to be explained uh, uh, also so for those uh, values. So, we looks on this uh, reference module transfer function and the principles which is goes on predicting uh, the results uh, through defining the different uh, trade off. So, of uh, different aspects of the valuable aspects are the performance measurement factors of the design. So, the trade offs of with respect to the test authoring time, um, where uh, your total test vectors will be generated and applied uh, to your uh, designed modules or a verification modules. So, that modules will be created through your uh, whole system consideration, so that itself we call it as an a CPU time, so that is the workable time which is needs to be taken care. 
so is what makes us to think on the referring to the different uh, crt uh, values so which considering these trade offs so the trade offs may may not be an a time dependent may be an a time dependent aspects of the values so if it is an trade offs with respect to an a time analysis so then we look at on uh, these timed values so if it is an a non timed parameters so then we look down the aspects of that so let us say i am doing an a power analysis so i will look only with respect to an a power aspects so maybe an a switching power so maybe an a, a static power uh, maybe an a, a other aspects or uh, uh, other power aspects of the design so maybe a routing power maybe an a generating power etc etc so including your vdd and a vss values so for that so we will say it as an the total um, crt which is made as an a two parts so one is considering these random stimulus at the input end and another one is how you can able to generate these random stimulus in a different aspect so that's why so we look the crt environment as an a two parts one as an a test code and another one as an a, a random number generators the test code which will be uses a stream of random values to create input to the output so that's what i told a stimulus values which takes up to give out an a responses so for all the all variety of the verification the second one the how well so you will consider this random values to be created so that is through your random number generators so generally we goes with an a pseudo random generators so we we have an a prng or atpg which will be do this uh, pseudo random generators so nowadays we are having an a artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning etc 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 so how we looks on to do this prng through those techniques uh, is a major end which will be looks on all these values so how we were uh, different predictions will be considered a n number of predictions will be considered to generate this seed of a a prngs uh, in your atpgs so majorly this is the work of an atpg uh, uh, which will be do uh, to generate that so this is the work of your test benches where it will be look set on uh, uh, to apply this stream of random values to your design model get verified uh, through their responses parameters so now so what to be randomized so you said the random value you said an atpgs or prngs what is there in your system so now we need to look at on what to be randomized so the randomization so is defining with an different stages of the verification as i told so as and also as with respect to an applications what you are uh, considering also so that's why so we look at on what to randomize so we will randomize an a device uh, maybe an a prototype device maybe an a virtual device maybe an your atpg device maybe an your design device so what are you calling it as the device which is used for this so that device needs to be confer, configured so that's why we will use an randomization so i'm not going in depth of all these aspects to be uh, considered here because that is uh, out of the scope to define here so i'm just looking at where to randomize or sorry, what to randomize so in those parameters so you have an crt environment the crt environment needs to be considered to configured with respect to our spec value so that's why so we look at on the environment configurations 
So, we look at on the input data, primary input data which is inserted. So, normally it is depends on uh, the generation also which, re which is with respect to the principles of uh, this, the number. So, you have a n number of inputs, so which goes on generating 2 to the power of n number of uh, input data sets or a data vectors which is required. So, so our values is not to generate the whole 2 to the power of n, so we look only for an a primary value, so which is goes on verify the effect so, you are design parameters. So, you, you do not set up an a primary values or you do not set up an a configured primary values. So, then you can encapsulate, you select your values what should be inserted, you encapsulate your input values what should be inserted such that it could be designed very effectively, very eff efficiently. So, that is itself. So, we look at as an uh, another one set to be taken up. So, my all systems is not only an a, 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 a design system, there should be an uh, on chip communications, there should be an uh, interconnects. So, nowadays we are using an network on chips. So, we are using an different protocols to do the communication inside the chip. So, such that we need to define a different protocol uh, values, so to communicate between them. So, now I will look at on these protocol exceptions uh, to be considered. So, generally we call this as an a constrained exceptions or a constrained protocol exceptions, which is a major factor uh, to define uh, your on chip communication. Maybe uh, the exceptions will be defining as an a constraints or a limitation, which will be considered with respect to that. So, as we know that the major factor of your verification is to define uh, different aspects. In a digital design, we call the center as an APDs, area, power, and an AD. So, the power and a area is a different aspects to study. So, which may comes across all these uh, uh, values, but the delay is not only limiting to these, so it will also interconnecting to an a, the A and a P, also it is have its independent appearance also. So, that independent appearance needs to be verified very effectively through their rand, uh, through their different values that referent value is an a predictable value. Let us say, I want my, uh, uh, let us say, I want to test my AND gate. So, or my, I want to test my APB bus, which is takes an input at every 10 seconds of the time. So, what I will do, my, I, I will enable the bus for every 10 seconds to get the input to be accepted through its accept protocol exceptions, accept protocol exception uh, signals. So, what is the time difference which is given at 10 nanoseconds to the original exceptional value will be the delay. So, those type of delays needs to be considered. So, to explain. So, my randomization will be looks on this delay analysis also. So, maybe input delays, maybe and response delays, maybe an a, a system execution delays, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, the transaction status, the transaction status as I take an example of an APB. So, APB will be issues for every transaction it will be doing. It. So, every signal which is appear on a bus will be get travel to the destination. At the destination it will receive an acknowledgement as an a token of transaction. So, it will be delivered again delivered to the source where it is the signal is generated. So, such that so I want to communicate in both the ways. So, going your signal, your source values and getting an acknowledgement. So, both the values. 
so both the values will be an a, a, a triggerable values which does the transaction from source to an a destination so this type of transactions i am giving a simple example so which the transaction may be with respect to your input test vector atpg2 and input test vector input test vector to your design module design module to your test uh, test benches and test benches to and responses responses to and error values so those also can be a transaction status all these transaction status what are all defined for these type of uh, travel these type of uh, issuing um, from every design module or every uh, verification module or every crt environment every configured module so will be uh, needs an a, 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 its a prng to be appear so there we looks for an anonymization so as already we defined the errors and an uh, errors so which is an 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 a predict non predictable uh, appearances of the responses uh, with respect to an a predicted values reference module the differences in the reference module values to the executed module values so will be defined as an error so to generate or to take up these errors the errors may not be uh, 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 as an uh, expected values, maybe an unexpected values also. So unpredicted values also. Those values can be a randomized values. Similarly, we can have an evolution. So the simple evolution for your negative slacks. So we are not expecting it in the negative slacks to be presented, but due to an uh, 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 design errors or uh, due to an uh, a uh, test vectors or a signal errors we will get an a uh, violation so those violations will be needs to be considered uh, in a different aspect so or may not be any constant uh, the violations so may be an different from one to one or a generated to an a generated uh, or expected to an expected so these violations so will be an a randomized value so there we looks for an this is a simple a uh, sets where we look for an uh, randomization so may not be limited uh, may not be uh, put on an whole things to an crt to look at on this so it will be an uh, just an uh, listed out important aspects uh, where you can look for an randomization so so to do this randomization so in a system very lot or in an hbl so we have an a, a different aspects to look at on so as i already defined so the system very lot is an a, a two conceptual analysis which is combined i think already you know it so one is your uh, hdl appearance what you are uh, defined it the second one is it a uh, uh, oops uh, majorly on uh, inheritance and an polymorphism polymorphism majorly we look for those two parameters i am not saying so other things will not be there so other things will also be there uh, to define this. so the random stimulus generation in system very lab is most useful uh, when used with an uh, oops so the randomization in a system very lab is to look at on for your prngs so that is nothing but your uh, stimulus generations so your first thing is to create a class which looks your objects so where the objects will be uh, looking looking for a different set of uh, values so that values may be an a an object group values that object group values are your uh, object members so that object members is nothing but i will call it as an a, a random variables so such that i will create an a class which holds a group of related random variables so 
this class will be putted on to an a, 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 a solver. So, that solver is your CRT environment where you will make out and a, a, a collect all these random solver or may be called as an a CRT outputs or as an a CRT responses. So, all these responses will be collected with respect to this random one. So, so that what all the class I created that class will hold as a random solver to its variables which takes up this random values. So, to define this random values you can make out an a limitations or you can make out an a, a this random values to be applied in a, a different a, a specific environment. Uh, where you need to be tested. So, that itself we are limiting to an a constraints or we are creating a constraints. So, I think so uh, in a PD or in a synthesis process, so you created a constraints for an a clock to take up its positive edge values. We are defining it as an a clock uh, will be equal to 1 for its quotes. So, that same thing I am looking at as an a constraints which is limited to take up only the clock as an analogical one. So, may be as an a positive edge triggered uh, the random uh, values. So, these random values what all I created uh, in this constrained environment or the, uh, this this constrained values. So, will needs to hold some features. So, as I told clock will be equal to 1, clock will be as an a positive edge of the uh, positive it should have to work with an a positive edges only. So, those values are definable in a different aspect. So, inside these classes. So, I can say clock equal to 1. So, I can also say it as an so the clock will be takes an its appearance only with respect to as an a, a, a the event which is occurred on it, positive events which is occurred on it. That is, so the value which is changing from 0 to an a 1. So, this value, this itself I call it as a positive edge clock equal to 1 or I can also call this as an a legal value. This is a legal value which is appeared. So, maybe if you defining with an a propagation delay, so then so it will be takes up that legal value with this delay parameter right that is what your random solver should have to look at on. So, if it is takes up uh, the, the whole switching time here for your uh, design. So, then that switching time itself will be again another uh, one features for an a random sol solver which can be definable. So, so, that so our major aim from these two points in a system very lot for the randomization is to develop an a true constraints that is a verifiable constraint. So, that constraint is generating as an a random input values call it as an a random stimulus. So, this random stimulus is created for every variable on its transaction values. So, it may be at a different level. So, you can look at on at an a RTL or you can look at on at an a TLL. If you look at on at an a RTL, so then the whole transaction uh, will be with respect to the event occurrences, these type of event occurrences. So, if it is with an a TLM, so only we look at on on these values. So, clock equal to 1 or clock equal to 0. So, such so that, so we can define all these values as an a constraint values, but all the constraint values what all we are considering is not an value at a time. So, it is not for this time only this value for this time. So, this value, so we are not defining it here. So, set 
buffer value which is predictable, so which is a true constraint value so which can be inserted to it to its transaction will be done. So, on this creations, on this creations. So, how to do this creations? So, I will do a simple random class which is uh, uh, takes up uh, to define that. So, as we define, so we need to create first we need to create a class, I am creating a class. So, I am just doing it for an a APB bus to do is transaction. So, I am taken a, a I am generating an pocket to do this transaction on APB. I have a class pocket, I am defining an a simple random class, so which is called as an a pocket. So, I am defining an a, a different variables here. So, you can look at on the variables. So, all are a dynamic variable values uh, or as an a pack variable values, source, destination and on a data. Data will be an a two dimensional source and a destination will be an a single dimension. So, what is the data type which will be used? The data type is an a bit. So, what is it defines? It is an two static values takes either 0 or 1. So, what is the thing we looks for this data type? I am looking it as an a, a, a rand. So, the rand is a command which is doing the generation for these variables a randomized bit values of this size little bit a destination 32 bit for a data 32 cross 8 values. So, similarly, so here I am not putting any constraints here, I am just putting a generalized manner a free space to generate this. Look at on this variable, I am taking another variable called as an a kind. So, which is of having an size of 8 bit of data type bit which takes an a different declaration which is an a random c. Random c is an a constrained random generation. How to define this constraints? We will look at on in the uh, next uh, slides. So, where uh, how this rand c will be takes up the values etcetera 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 and how it will be generated also. This c what I am given here is an a constraint, so which can be limited or which cannot be limited also. So, it is an automatic generation the constraints here, so I can say that constraints automatically how it should have to take the constraints automatically. So, if you do not want this to be generated automatically, so then you can go and generate for this RAND data type uh, as an a constraint value. So, this is the constraints generation for the variables under the data type rand. So, the constraint is a c. So, you can give any variable name here, I am given it as an c. Constraint is a, a keyword which is used to generate the constraints. So, I am putting for any signals that constraints, I am taking only in a source. So, where your pocket is generated as an a constraint. So, I am limiting the pocket size here. So, from 10 bits to an 15 bits, I am just leaving it should be greater than 10 and it should be less than 15. So, I am putting a constraint to generate the minimum size of the pocket is 10 and the maximum size of the pocket is 15 bits, 10 bits to an a 15 uh, bits as it is considered as a 32 bit value. So, what I am looking at here? So, I am looking at two things how you can use a rand data type and how you can use a rand. Rand is a simplest manner of generating a randomized value for this, it is not a constrained one, uh, and then the constraint is the another one where you would look for any constraints. So, I will stop here for this session. So, thank you.